District, welcome to Teaching Through Television. I'm Valerie MacDonald, Kindergarten Teacher at Robert Smalls International Academy. Today we are going to be reading One Word from Sophia by Jim Averbeck and Yasmin Ishmael. Big thank you to our publisher, Anthem Books for Young Readers, for allowing us to use this wonderful story today. Beginning with the end in mind, we are going to be working on I Can Write an Opinion Piece. This time, I want you to say it with me. I can write an opinion piece. Excellent job. Just a reminder, your opinion is how you think or feel about something. Can you do that with me? Your opinion is how you think or feel about something. Awesome. Now, let's take a look at the front cover of our book. I am noticing a little girl and a giraffe. I'm wondering if the little girl's name is Sophia or if the giraffe's name is Sophia. I'm also wondering what that one word is and why it is so important. Let's read our story to find out. Sophia's birthday was coming up and she had five things on her mind. One true desire and four problems. Her one true desire was to get a pet giraffe for her birthday. The four problems were mother, who was a judge, father, who was a businessman, Uncle Conrad, who was a politician. The word politician means an elected government official, like a mayor or the president. And Grandmama, who was very strict. Sophia presented her case to mother. I would like a giraffe she said, because they burn less gasoline so they meet federal regulations better than the cars we use now. In the last 50 years, no giraffes have been recalled for defective parts and newer models have a particularly strong sef safety record. Also, giraffes have not been shown to be the cause of any major diseases. Giraffes are legal in all 50 states. And a giraffe could take me to ballet class and deliver me right to the second floor. Her argument was accompanied by a compelling slideshow that included a map of the walk to class. The word compelling means something that convinces you or talks you into doing something. Can you say the word compelling? Awesome job. We will hear the word compelling a lot in our story. What was Sophia's reason that she gave her mother for wanting a pet giraffe? If you said because it could take her to ballet class, give yourself a thumbs up. You are right. I'm sorry, said mother in her decision, but I will have to rule against a giraffe at this time. You have provided no proof that you are ready for pet ownership and fail to cite any laws about minors driving quadrupeds, and your argument was too verbose. Hmm, on this page there are two words that I don't know what they mean, the word verbose and the word quadruped. Lucky for us, the author added a glossary to our story. It's in the back of the book and it will help tell us what those words mean. So looking at the glossary, the word verbose means using too many words. And the word quadruped means a four-footed animal. Verbose? asked Sophia. What's that mean? Too many words, said mother. How many should I use? Fewer, said mother, and she retired to her chambers. So, Sophia used fewer words with father. Giraffes, said Sophia, are a good source of manure, which can be sold at a profit to garden centers and activists. In short, people will pay me for poop. What was the reason Sophia gave her father for wanting a pet giraffe? That's right, poop. Let's see what her father says. Her proposal was accompanied by a compelling graph 
showing how much money she would make. I'm sorry, said father, but your business plan is unsound. You failed to count the cost of care and feeding for your manure producer, not to mention the warehousing of poop. And your presentation was far too effusive. Effusive? asked Sophia. What's that mean? Too many words, said father. How many should I use? Fewer, said father, and he got back to his conference call. Sophia pulled other members of the household. When you pull someone, that means you ask their opinion on something. Who is Sophia pulling on this page? If you said her toys or stuffed animals, you are correct. And presented the results to Uncle Conrad. So her poll says, ballerinas should ride giraffes to school. Strongly agree, somewhat agree, agree, mildly agree, disagree. And the family members she polled are Mr. Bun, Tiger Eye, Pony Boy, Snakey Poo, and Ted. Four out of five respondents are in favor of giraffes, she said. The results were accompanied by a compelling pie chart. Wow, when I look at this page, I notice that Sophia works really hard on her compelling illustrations and even going as far as using graphics. I'm sorry, said Uncle Conrad, but your results indicate that being in favor of giraffe ownership would cost me support from the Pony American community. And besides, your report was far too loquacious. Sophia didn't even need to ask. Hmm, I wonder what the word loquacious means. Do you think that it means too many words? Mother said Sophia used too many words. Father said Sophia used too many words. So I bet Uncle Conrad had the same opinion. Finally, she approached Grandmama. She accompanied her plea with a compelling foot rub. Giraffe, no, said Grandmama, and do try to get to the point next time. I am noticing that Sophia does not look happy on this page. I wonder what she will do next. In a last desperate attempt before her birthday, Sophia prepared to speak to everyone at once. She revised and shortened her proposition until it was just one word. I think we're about to find out what the one word from Sophia is. Ooh, I wonder if you can make a prediction, a guess about what that word is. Please! The proposal was accompanied by a particularly compelling pair of eyes. On her birthday, Sophia was delighted to find that short and sweet often brings results. One word really worked, she said. And two words came in handy as well. Thank you. The end. What were some of the compelling things Sophia used to convince her family to get her a pet giraffe? Awesome thinking. I heard some of you say she gave her grandmama a compelling foot rub, she made a graph, she made a pie chart, she pulled family members, and she drew pictures. Now, we are going to be just like Sophia and convince our families to let us have a make-believe pet. Today, 
we are going to convince our families to let us have a tiger as a pet. In order to get started writing, you will need some materials. You will need a paper. You can use any type of paper. I'm going to use just a plain one. You will need a pencil and crayons and colored pencils if you have them. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to gather your materials and come back here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, with a pencil in 5, a paper in 4, crayons in 3, colored pencils in 2, ready to work in 1, and 0. Excellent! I love how quickly you gathered all of your materials and came right back here. So now we are ready to write our opinion piece. We are going to be writing four sentences. Remember, when we write, we start from the top to the bottom, from the left to the right. So I am going to start in the top left corner of my paper. First, we will be telling our families our opinion about having a tiger for a pet. I am going to write, I want a tiger because they are really cool. Your sentence can be the same as mine or it can be different. Remember, this is your opinion. Awesome, I like how I'm seeing that you're beginning your sentences with a capital letter and that you've got a period at the end of your sentence. Amazing job, writers. Now, we are going to be telling our families a reason why we would want a tiger as a pet. I think a tiger would be a really good protector. So I'm going to write, tigers are strong and could protect our family from danger. Now, you can have the same reason as me or you can choose to write something different. It's your opinion. I'm going to start my next sentence right next to my last sentence by leaving a space and starting with another capital letter. I see that just like me, you are making sure to leave spaces in between each of your words. Great job. For our next sentence, we will give another reason why we think a tiger would make a good pet. Remember, just like Sophia, we are trying to come up with as many compelling reasons as we can. So I think that tigers would be really nice and cuddly. So I'm going to write, tigers are soft and cuddly like big cats. Who wouldn't want a soft and cuddly pet? I see some really awesome handwriting out there. I see that you're really taking your time to form those letters and make your handwriting beautiful so anyone could read it. For our last sentence, we are going to restate our opinion. Tell our families one more time that we want a tiger for a pet. 
So I'm going to write, a tiger would make a great pet. At the end of this sentence, I use an exclamation mark because I'm really excited and I'm really hoping that my family is convinced that we should have a tiger for a pet. Now that you have finished your opinion piece, writers, I want you to become illustrators. At the bottom of your paper, you have a ton of space where you could illustrate your writing. So I would draw a picture of a tiger protecting my family because that goes along with my writing. I can't wait to see what you illustrate. When you're all finished writing and illustrating, I want you to find a member of your family, a stuffed animal, or a pet that you could read this piece to. When you're finished reading this piece, you can go ahead and turn your paper over and think of another pet, real or make-believe, that you would like to convince your family that you should have. Parents, you can have your child either write or discuss their opinion. If they don't feel like writing or you can't motivate them to write, go ahead and have them discuss it and have them give you reasons and explanations for their opinion. So a few examples that you could use are what you should have for dinner tonight, what activity you should do as a family, or what movie you should watch tonight. Now you can have your child to give their opinion on many different things. It doesn't have to be these ones. There are also three books that are a lot like One Word from Sophia that you can find online to read to your child. All of these books are about children who want a pet and they're trying to convince their families to get them one. The books are How Do Dinosaurs Choose Their Pets by Jane Yolen and Mark Teague, I Want an Iguana by Karen Kaufman Orloff, and The Perfect Pet by Margie Palenti. Today we read One Word from Sophia by Jim Averbeck and Yasmin Ishmael. We use that story to help us write our own opinion piece. Let's say our I Can statement one more time together. I can write an opinion piece. Awesome job today, writers. Give yourself a pat on the back and say, I'm good stuff. Thank you for tuning in to Teaching Through Television. We hope to see you next time.